In the beginning of a career, if you do not want to plan how do you want to approach, you may get into trouble. I have done the mistakes I need to do in my life and that's the most beautiful part that I have done my mistakes. If I'm around for 20-25 years, it's my hard work and my blah and blue. No, we can never plan this journey. Sir, earlier this week, I just made one request and you immediately agreed to give us this time. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Not just that, I think you've allowed us into your very private space where everything looks like you've handpicked. So, thanks again for doing that for us. My pleasure, sir. So, this conversation is not going to be about any one particular film of yours. I thought it would be a good idea to just have a conversation with you about your journey and the experiences that that journey has given to you. More like a Sunday breakfast conversation. 20 years in an industry where one's life could be changed every Friday. And still, you are one of the biggest stars we have. 24. 24. So what explains this longevity? Nothing. Be honest. Be honest, your work. And nothing else. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to be honest because there is definitely going to be phases of life which is going to make you react badly, react in a different manner, probably you never expected or least expected. And then you all come to terms with it. See, we can never plan this journey. Nobody can say that if I'm around for 20, 25 years, it's my hard work and my blah and blue. No. I think time needs to be kind. You need to get a little lucky with everything. And you, you definitely feel like a chosen one by the end of it. And there's always this question which came to me, why me and... I look at them, this is good looking, yeah? I mean, and when you see them perform, they're good. Everything is nice. So, this is where you start, you know, feeling lucky. You start having gratitude towards all those people who still come to the theatre. Gratitude to our time, and then you feel less arrogant about your achievements, and then say, "Don't, don't tag this stardom, man. You just got really lucky, and be happy with what you have." Sir, there definitely has been a lot of hard work. There's definitely has been focus. There's definitely has been a lot and lot of sacrifices. That also adds on. I will not say it's only luck. That also adds on. Now, how do I decide? Whether it is this or that, that has taken me 24 years. I don't know and I don't want to analyze. I will just enjoy what's coming my way. Mm. I still feel so happy that this relationship with cinema is still carrying on. And it is the most senior relationship that I share in my life. And it's still around, still loves me. And I still love the world. It's a happy cinema. marriage. So it's a very beautiful relationship I'm sharing and we're still going strong. Why not analyze that? Is it because good things aren't meant to be analyzed? Just take it as they are? You can't get an answer, Kairam. Unless and until you're going to be happy settling with one answer that you like. <laughs> you know, we all like to hear what we like to hear, don't we? So that way, you may just hear, sir, it's you, sir, your stardom, sir, your, your talent, sir, blah, sir. I'd like to hear that, there are plenty around. On that note, do you make an effort to ensure that the right kind of people are around you? Yes, sir, because I always had the wrong types and I never realized, see, nobody knows what's right and wrong till the wrong happens sure. or till the right happens. So I'm not somebody who's judging or going to be judgmental about certain people. They all gave me the opinions that I have today. I can't have an opinion what you can't give me, Kairam. How can I form an opinion? You meet me, you give me an opinion, opinion and you go back and that's the opinion I have. So we all know what opinion we have to give also. Accordingly we all behave, don't we? But then certain times it doesn't happen, so go with the flow. You'll know what is right and wrong someday. Act accordingly. Sir, if I'm right, you started off acting in a TV serial. No. I started uh, my career uh, with a film called Brahma, okay. which is in 1996, Jan 31st, at the floor in Kantirava, which I just finished the shooting, so it was a very nostalgic one. I started my film there, but that film didn't actually kind of complete. Okay. It's post that, 
I did a film called O Kusma Bale. Post that, that also didn't complete. Then I did a film called Tayeva, which went on for a long time, and then the film released, and that film ran for three days, and that's when I went to the television. Okay, okay. Prema da Kadambari. Yes. So and. After having worked in two films that did not see the light of the day, and one which saw the light of the day only for three which days, didn't see the people. <laughs> yeah. Two didn't see light. The third one didn't see people at all. <laughs> yeah. right. And then, really, and I mean it when I say this, and I've said this in a couple of other videos as well. You are the real Pan India star from Karnataka today. Sure, we are releasing films supposedly Pan India today, and all of that. But even before that happened, there were all other regional languages which were inviting you to be a part of their film. From there to here, has anything changed? Yeah, things do change, Kairam. We can't be without changes. Things have changed. I have changed. Forget others. I have changed over the period of time. You know, my perspectives have changed. We all keep changing. If you meet me another three years from now, I'll say the same thing again. That yeah, from that interview to today, there are a few changes again. It starts with your thoughts. It starts with your age. It starts with your growth, bank balance. Everything changes. It has definitely changed a lot. It has. But today, does Sudeep even have the time to sit back and in re retrospect look at it and then appreciate what life has given to him? Today is when I have time, Kairam. I never used to have time earlier because I used to always be chasing something or someone. I lost most of my time chasing. And then one day you realized you're chasing something that's running away from you. Hmm. So what actually was beside us and what was actually following us lost its momentum because of the way we are running away from it. Wow. So you kind of slow down. Slow down not because you can't catch up. The things and people you left behind needs to catch up with you. But you felt good at that moment because they're still behind. Wow. wow. I mean, this is fantastic. So you're saying we are always catching up to something and then people who were catching up people to us... People and your destiny is right behind and it's trying to cope up with you and trying to say, son, I'm here. <laughs> I keep just going on somewhere. See, what I'm saying is, this sounds very philosophical, but then after I slowed down is when I started kind of really seeing a better life, better career. People who wanted to work with me, everything, sir. I mean, I have taken things. I have done the mistakes I need to do in my life. And that's the most beautiful part, that I have done my mistakes, you know. Else there's so, no learning. Yes, yes, yes. Whether it is about... Um, selections of certain things, decisions of my life, speaking about another co-star or another actor or get into the contemporary mode, zone, you know, all this I think I have done and you know, you realize one day that it's not like that, it doesn't work that way. What works is not about raging a war against somebody, it's not about fighting with somebody, it's about protecting what you have. I always believe that, you know, kingdom doesn't mean that you need to keep fighting, sir. It's about protecting your kingdom. And I always and believe whenever there's a war, many die with it. The last person to die is the king. There cannot be a battles without deaths. Many die. Or probably because they're soldiers or something like that, it's ignored. King is alive. You know, but I don't think today we should be looking at wars like that. There are people who are associated with us who suffer too. So in that range, I think, you know, we should always protect what is given to us and move on. And we are all happy. Sir, what aided you in getting this perspective of life? Is it just life itself or reading and anything else that you... It's my life. Life itself. I don't read books. But I'm very bad at reading books. I've tried my hands at reading books. I love to see people reading books. And I find that the way they're reading tempts me to read. But then the, I, I open the book, third page, I forget the characters. I go back and see who is who's this guy then. And again I come back and I... So it, it just doesn't go well with me. Then one day, you know, it's, it's always a question you need to throw yourself. Throw yourself with the right question. You know, and you'll get an answer. Throw yourself with the right question. The question I always throw to myself has been like that. And this is one of such questions. Why is that I'm not enjoying? See, two things. One, I'm a very visual guy. 
for me visual. You narrate a story, I will sit and listen to you for two, two and a half hours. I have my mind is working, something that works for us. Mm. Secondly, it might sound a little awkward, but I can't follow a book which somebody else has written. I can't follow somebody else's perspective. Instead, lead a life worth becoming a book someday. I had this question for later on, but I'll ask this now. In Kannada films, we don't see a lot of biopics as such, which are seen uh, predominantly in Bollywood. What could be the reason? Like, is our industry thinking about it? So there are too many restrictions. Sir. Okay. Too many restrictions. So whenever they, uh, very our industry has been, you know, a lot of people have invested money. A lot of people see there's a lot of investment of money. And when you invest money... Sir, but isn't that the case in Bollywood as no, well? That's what I'm coming to. So what I'm saying, when you invest money, you want to make a passionate film and you want to be honest about it. See, either we adapt a particular novel or a particular thought. But there is a biopic happening. One of the interpretations. There's no truth over here. There's an interpretation. So one of the interpretations you adapt and you're going to make a film. But by the end of it, you're sitting answering questions. There's a bombardment of some other people, bombardment of, no, he was not like this, you showed him this way, you showed him. Showing him this way, you attack the other family like this, that family was not like this. So there's so many things that keep coming and coming and coming and coming, then you suddenly find yourself sitting somewhere and answering all these questions. Now you suddenly realize, Kairam, do we need it? Right. Right. Don't we have other stories? We would have made, wanted to make a biopic because we love that personality. We feel that story needs to be told. Something inspired you. But by the end of it, if that film is affecting your life, your hard-earned money, so many things, so many restrictions, now you suddenly start wondering. You know, like It's like breakfast. You wake up in the morning. You're, you're damn hungry. Yeah? So they tell you this breakfast is getting prepared. You don't mind waiting for that. You know, ah, they're making something special. Now, but if that is exceeding a certain time and becoming a stress to you, you don't mind a simple bread and butter. Forget butter. You don't mind just a bread and a probable toast. Nothing. Just eat it because you're hungry. Now, every storyteller is hungry, sir. You want to narrate a story. That's what you want to do. Right. If that is giving you so much of stress, would you want it? Not that you don't want to say it. Not that a biopic doesn't interest you. There are such wonderful personalities in our state. Sports people, cinema people. Are if you can make stories about them, wonderful. But will you be able to release it that calmly? So then doesn't it uh, you know, come down to who's going to bell the cat? Also connected to that, <coughs> do you also feel that making films nowadays has become much more of a turmoil than it was earlier in the context of artists having their artistic liberty and all of that? No, sir. It all depends upon and boils down to whether I being ambitious or I being passionate. Hmm. All right. Ambitiousness always gets you into trouble because it can get dangerous. When you get over ambitious. I want to be ambitious. I want to do this. I want to show that. I want to or are you a passionate filmmaker? I just want to narrate a story, that's it. I can make it simple. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? So when it is like that, keep it simple. Now when we say a commercial flick, hmm. we only mean, we want to entertain, that's it. If this film works, superb. If it doesn't work, we'll do one more. If it works, anyway we have to do one more. Why, why go through? See, now this is not something which is like, you know, trying to be safe or run away. This is an experience what I'm speaking. Sure. If 24 years I've been around, I've seen it. I've not seen it, just my life. I've seen other people's life also, what they tried to do and how they suffered. And you feel bad about it. I mean, what was their mistake? Their mistake was just wanting to tell a story. They just wanted to say this, 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 and it didn't. So much of things, obstacles to everything and... They did everything but even remotely tell a story by the end of it. They themselves became stories. See, these are, there are examples. It's not that we don't want to. That's why I said, every creator has got a passion. Every creator has got such. And sometimes, Kairam, every story make, teller has one story that he wants to narrate. Mm. And that's the only story sometimes he can't say. Correct. 
that's the only thing he can't say sometimes. It, it, it's, it's quite heavy on the heart. What is Sudeep's general commentary or observation about, just say, just let's say the political situation. If, you know, you were to have um, a conversation with a friend and then look at, hey, this is happening, that is happening. So what would your general commentary be? The first thing I always say is, I don't understand what's happening. Politics is something that's never interested me. And I am worried about certain things for which I will get an answer. Somebody will know. Sir, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The reason I asked that was how, I mean, the intention was how important is it for an artist to be very aware of the political situation? Sir, being aware of what is happening is different and trying to prove that you are an actor and trying to say things every time mm. may go wrong, sir. And when you don't speak, that doesn't mean you're running away from a situation. Maybe, you know, it's better that you don't speak because people know what they want, you know. And uh, the situation may be such that the politicians are doing their best also sometimes. It's not that we need to look down upon anybody. Today when I speak, it's just the thought that because I'm an actor and a popularity that people will see, hear and read. Now that shouldn't be misused. Why speak about something if you really do not aware of the matters? Just give us, somebody will come and tell you, sir, I think there's a situation, you need to tweet about it, everybody are tweeting. No, I, I will not do that, not because I'm worried. I may not know the matter completely, sir. You should never look like an idiot. By the end of it, you say something, and suddenly somebody else tweets, sir, it's not like that, sir, it's like, oh, shit, oh, really? Now, I don't think any superstar, any actor or anybody, if you take, sir, they all have great knowledge about certain things. They may not have knowledge about certain things. We are all human by the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. I'm a person who like to speak if I know the matter and if that matter interests me. Otherwise, I'm also a layman of the country who will go with the flow just like the public, wanting to understand what is happening. And that's one thing that I've seen with you especially. You don't pass a judgment for matters that you think you're not aware of. You don't even make any yeah, I will not, comments sir. about that. I will not, sir. It's not right. As much as it hurts us, when somebody passes a judgment without knowing the matter, it will hurt them too, right? Whoever it is. Why? Why should we just react, react, react? Why should we make reaction a habit? Reaction is an emotion. It shouldn't become a habit and it shouldn't become mandatory. There should be a time when you don't react. Just sit with your coffee, don't react. Bad coffee, good coffee, no. <laughs> just, just have no. Stop reacting, no. Sir, but there's also a lot of pressure on celebrities saying that, hey, you did not comment about this. And yeah. then one fine day they that feel is something, genuine. That's something you need to handle. Yeah. Yeah. You are somebody who is going to yield to that pressure. Then you have to face it, sir. Otherwise, kind of, I think that's what I told you. I am somebody who tweet, but I don't see the reactions of my tweet. I do a film. I don't see the reviews of my film. All right. I keep a track of which are the films releasing, how they did business, what's working, because that's my work, sir. I need to understand what kind of stories are selling. Do you also watch these films? Sometimes. Sometimes, not always. See, I also believe a box office collection is not about showing a superiority. It only shows you how much people love you. That's box office collections for me. Now, when you listen to the script of, let's say, Pile 1, which at the very least is going to be uh, physically taxing, right? Um, it, it's going to be much more, but physically taxing at the very least. What prompts you to sign that film? Is it that, hey, I want to try this out, I want to present this to my audience, um, only that, or is there something else? After so many years, Kairam, we want to tell everything, we want to do different things. For the sake that, you know, life shouldn't get monotonous to me, first of all. Sure. So when a pile one has been said, I loved it. I loved the thought. I loved the intention behind this fight last. The children, the things to whatever. And uh, I've never tried it. So where this question is coming from is, I was talking to Mr. Rishabh Shetty once. And he said, I was in Hyderabad in the pile one sets. And I saw Sudeep sir running, lifting tires, doing X, Y, Z. Whatever the director asked, he said. And Rishabh Shetty said, right, I was wondering why was he doing all of that, right? So that's where this question comes from, right? 
you like probably when you heard that script you know this is going to be physical taxing for sure. I liked it. Okay. I like the fact that you know it's challenged me and I'm going to be getting into a gym which I've never have. So it was a challenge for me. And it was not just that part, the, it's the emotion behind yeah. that that made me agree to go through this process. Just the tire, just the thing, just the boxing, why would I want to do that? Not because it's stressing. There are big stories which are told already. I mean like, but then I love the fact that, you know, this guy last, he's doing something for children who are not his. There's an intention, beautiful intention. Over and there. what I loved I, there was like Sunil Shetty, the character Sarkar brings you up and you were a nobody for him. That is what Krishna also tries doing with the kids sir, on the street. It's, it's like what goes around comes around and helping is a chain, sir. Somebody's helped you, you help somebody else and it, life goes on and you know, you pass your talent to somebody else. Somebody else's talent you recognize, give them a platform. I have always believed in that and so what happens, this movie, that one thing I liked. Sure. For me, every time I wake up in the morning and I'll get out of my house, something should be exciting, Kairam. I want to wake up in the morning, let's go, let's go to the set, let's do something. That scene today, the scene we are shooting, that's exciting. I want, let, let's see, like go see to the director, how are we conceiving it? Okay, that guy said, call him now, come, come, come. The co-star, he said, now what are we doing? So this is a desert, before you put on the makeup, I said, let's go to the set. So this is where you're shooting, okay, what do we do? So whatever, whatever so camera, everything is out. Mm. So only yes. So we and the actor, you discuss, so you know, as much as me, you're also a part of the scene that makes you more important than me right now. Let's understand what we're going to do. Let's come to a conclusion. So the director notes what we're going and we understand what the director wants, you know. And then you start placing your cameras to conceive what we decided. Sure. Rather, you wake up, you go, a uh, shot ready. So you come. Uh, yeah, I went through the scene. Yeah, I went through the scene. What's the shot? Uh, sir, uh, this dialogue, this dialogue, we have left. We'll take it later. This dialogue. Okay. Now, where is the camera? Sit this. Okay. Right. Sure. This can also be done, Kairam. But then, we lose the aesthetics, the authenticity, the innocence behind the scene. Now, we are acting. Mm. Acting to the requirement of the shot, not the scene. Because we both have not understood the scene at all. I can't work like that. For me, I need to get excited. I need to have my co-stars. I need my director to fall in love with me every day. I need him to be my director. I need me to be with my director. I need to understand what you want. For that few months, we are family. Now, the choice of the film is done long back. Now, don't sit analyzing, am I right, am I wrong? You have done it, sir. Now, do it wholly, na. Do it on the complete. Film cannot be tre treated or, or possessed. A script needs to be sleeping with everyone. As a DOP, you need to do with it. As a camera, as an actor, I need to sleep with it. As a director, he needs to sleep with it. If you start acting possessive and say, no, this is mine, you cannot, you just do what you're so, you know, this is going to be an individual effort. When a cinema happens on the whole, know that each one is in the film is involved. Sir, it may not become the biggest set, but it will definitely not be a bad film. Have you ever thought of, why did I even think of films? Was it just the applause, the likability of a film? I have an answer for this. Like, see, um, I used to play a lot of cricket, but that was not encouraged well. And probably I was not that talented to play for the state or something, though we were good at it. Maybe not that talented to play to a, def a certain level. Then, of course, joined engineering. And the engineering was not a choice that I made. Probably those years it was a, um, a fashion or a mandatory thing that either you're in medicine or in engineering because my cousins are doing or my somebody's doing, this is a you also get in. I got in. I was not enjoying it. But what I realized there is suddenly I just started participating in mad ads. Mm. I started participating on stage with uh, music and composing. I wouldn't get a chance to sing because there were good singers. So I used to play guitar and drums there. So do anything to be on stage. Wow. Yeah, I used to write mad ads and direct skits. But something about that stage, people's applause to everything, it, that was 
really making me feel very nice. Sure. Then cricket, again cricket, empty stadium if it is going to go. Why would you want to be a cricketer at all? You like stadiums to be full. You, that's an entertainment again. And you want to lift your bat and do that when you think. And imagine nobody's there. So it's the crowd. Mm. It's the applause. Sure. It's, it's, your, it's them recognizing you and say, you're that. That started kind of, you know, attracting me further. So I think it's one day, it's not long that I decided I'll be in the field of entertainment. I didn't come to be an actor. Oh, you didn't come to be an actor? I always used to meet Upendra, if I can bleed, how do you expect me to be God? We were supposed to do Bilaranga Basha. Shivana at least plays cricket. Little Puneet doesn't. I don't know which film Ram Gopal Varma saw, which film Rajmoli saw, which film Salman Khan saw. Recognition will come if it has to come. Hi, this is Kicha Sudipa here. And if you like this video, please do subscribe to Film Companions South right now.